Vinny Politan, get ready. We've got a big hour here coming up on closing arguments. And we start with a story um, involving a 19-year-old, okay? She seems younger than, he, than, than, than she actually is when she speaks. Maybe has had a little bit of a sheltered life. I don't know. So she's 19, gives birth to a child in the hospital bathroom by herself. She's in a hospital. She goes in the bathroom, gives birth, then wraps the child in plastic, puts the child in the trash, covers it with more plastic. The child is dead. Now she's charged with murder. And we're all trying to figure out this case. Like, how does this happen? How, how, she's in a hospital, for goodness sake. She's in the hospital. They didn't know that she was in labor? She didn't, like, call out for a little bit of help? I don't understand it. No one understands it. Um, take a listen. Here's the charge nurse uh, who was interviewed by police at the scene. She had taken it and put it in the regular trash, and there's still trash all around the baby. She put it right in the trash can. Then she twisted it and wrapped it underneath him and then set the baby in the bottom. Then she put paper towels on top and then two wadded up uh, trash cans or liners. They were clean on top of that. And then she placed a brand new clean liner in the trash can like it was ready to take trash. That's, that's what I found. Yeah, she's, so he's she's said cold and blue already? Cold and blue already. His, his temperature was like 95. Um, no signs of life, no breathing, no respirations, no heartbeat, nothing, no movement whatsoever. So her name's Alexi Treviso. Now, we spoke with her attorney and long conversation with him. And, and it seems they believe that the hospital is responsible here for what happened. It's not a murder case. Um, it's, it's, it's the hospital who perhaps, according to the defense, they may go this way, cause the death of this child. So we got to take a look at the autopsy uh, results and, and take a look. The, the cause of death here was asphyxia, suffocation, strangulation by entrapment. Manner of death, homicide. How the injury occurred. The child was tied in a plastic bag. Now in this, in this autopsy, they said, yeah, there, were, there was air in the lungs. The baby took breaths so how is it not murder well tonight we're going to take a look at the toxicology report i'm going to put it up on the screen i can't explain it to you but uh caffeine presumed positive morphine 19 nanograms per milliliter and we believe the morphine was administered by the hospital then phenamine 420 nanograms per milliliter. What does this mean? What does this mean? I need an expert. Let's bring in our guest to help analyze these results. Joining us in Barrington, Rhode Island, board certified forensic pathologist, Dr. Priya Banerjee. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm trying to understand the toxicology tonight. This is brand new for us. I spoke with the defense counsel. He was talking about the morphine, this 19 nanograms per milliliter. What does that tell you about what happened to this baby? Yeah, so I mean, it's a complex picture. You know, we have to take sort of forest and trees. I mean, we're looking, the toxicology is part of the puzzle. Now, I think you're correct that the morphine was given in the setting of her back pain. That was her chief complaint. Now, that's still a therapeutic level. You know, what goes into the mom goes into the baby, right? So that's how we know that the baby even got it. So is, is that, you say, a therapeutic level? Could that cause problems for the child? Because, again, the defense may very well argue that the morphine caused the child to die after taking one or two breaths, whatever... Um, their expert is going to say is, is right. I mean, these are very complex cases and I don't even, I haven't even reviewed like the autopsy itself with that caveat though, could it have impacted a newborn's breathing potentially, but you have to remember that 
you know, like after a C-section, um, I received other opioids, right, for pain, and that didn't, and that breast milk was still getting into the baby. So I don't think they would have given her anything to harm the baby. Now, could it have impeded breathing? Potentially, but, you know, you can't ignore that the baby was very, very, like, carefully disposed of. Right, she didn't, I think her reaction and the disposal of the baby is the most horrifying part of this. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, and not calling out for help and not saying anything. That's a right. big, if big it's part a of this. Baby, I think, you know, then she would have, she should have brought it out to the nurses, et cetera. But, um, you know, that's where we get into the nuances of the case. Did the baby cry, did it not? I do want to put out there, though, that the baby got CPR, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That's a very critical element to clarify um, because that can artificially inflate the lungs or get air in the stomach. So you don't want to overcall that, you know, and we know she's already at the hospital. They're going to try to resuscitate a baby, you know, not just assume it's dead. So I just want to put these little caveats out there. These are not straightforward cases at all. No, and I expect a huge battle of the experts if and when this goes exactly. to trial. Absolutely. I'm just trying to get a little more perspective here. Now, the, the yeah. fen is it fenermine, fenermine? I, I don't... Yeah, it's fentermine. Fentermine, 420 nanograms per milliliter. Is that a lot? Should someone who's pregnant be taking that? Can that impact the child as well? I mean, anything the mom takes impacts the child, you have to remember that. Now this is normally a diet drug. If you recall back in the day, Fen, Fen, that sort of combination that's no longer used for other medical uh, complications, that it was part of that combination. So, you know, why is she on a diet drug while she's pregnant? It's probably to conceal the pregnancy. You know, I bet her friends or family asked, you know, you're looking, she's pretty petite from her pictures and even now, um, right? She's only five feet tall and she looks like a slim build. So I'm sure her stomach became prominent. Now, maybe she's saying I'm gaining weight and that's why the ventermine's in her system. This is available, I even checked before I logged on, like online you can buy it without a prescription. So it's, it's a traditional diet drug. Yeah, and it, what's, what's not clear in the case is whether or not she knew she was pregnant. Right. And, you know, she's 19. Does she think she's gaining weight? So she's taking diet pills. And then how, what impact does that have on the child? What impact does the morphine? A lot of questions in this one. Dr. Priya right. Banerjee, great to see you tonight. Thank you so much for making a house call. Take care. Good night. All right. Let's bring our think tank. Friday night, joining us in Atlanta, Georgia, family law attorney, law professor, at Emory University, Randy Kessler. Also with us tonight in Washington, D.C., you recognize him, the attorney who represented Johnny Depp in his defamation case, won that case, by the way, in case you didn't see the end of it. <laughs> Everybody saw the end of it. And fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers, Ben Chu is with us. And in Cleveland, Ohio, retired judge, former criminal prosecutor for Cuyahoga County in Ohio, judicial fellow at the National Judicial College, Gail Byers. All right. Great to see everyone on this Friday. Um, sorry, guys. We're going ladies first, plus the judge goes first. Anyway, uh, what are you thinking here, uh, Judge? Um, this case, to me, especially after speaking with uh, Alexi's defense attorney, they're going to they're gonna say it's the hospital's fault. The hospital. You're in a hospital. They know that she's pregnant. She goes to the bathroom, she's in labor, they gave her morphine. They're gonna say that the hospital killed this baby. And you know, Vinny, I think that um, that's wholly expected. Um, there is, just as you indicated, gonna be a battle of the experts in this case. You're going to have the defense that essentially has the responsibility of convincing a single juror um, that 
they should at least not buy whatever the prosecutor story is. Because remember, the prosecution has the burden of proof. They must prove beyond a reasonable doubt every essential element of the crimes charged. And I believe there are two, the murder and the tampering. And all the defense has to do, if anything, is, is to find one holdout. And they will no doubt rely on that argument, um, positioning or transitioning the um, responsibility to the hospital um, in an effort to achieve that. Um, while the prosecution must convince every single juror that the defendant is in fact guilty. Now, what I will say is just as the, the doctor said in the prior segment, there is something to be said for this marriage of you know criminal act and criminal um, mind. And there's gonna be, I think, some considerable attention paid to the level um, and effort that was or allegedly taken to conceal the body of well, the baby. I know what they're gonna say there. She's in a panic. She's 19. Her mother's in the room. She's like, oh my, I, all this is happening at once. How would you react, ladies and gentlemen, if you were 19 years old and you didn't know you were pregnant? All of a sudden you're giving birth and, and you don't know what to do. You just kind of, you know, I, I, I can hear it already. I know the way it's going to play. Let me, let me do this, though. Um, take a listen. And, and, and Ben, I want you to listen closely to this. And, and I want your take on whether or not you think Alexi Treviso in this video, this body cam video, seems sympathetic at all. Let's watch. Lexi, I told you about this. But I just asked you, baby, to tell me the truth. It was not crying or nothing. I'm sorry about this, but in terms of delivering um, a baby and it looked like you tried to hide it, we do have to have the police involved. And nothing was crying. It came out with nothing. Do you guys have, I'm the charge nurse here. Do you guys have any questions for me? Like how big is the baby? It's full term. What? Nothing. Nine months? Nothing was crying. Lexi, have you watched the news of the, the girls that, what they do to their babies and what they go to jail? Nothing was crying. <laughs> What do you think, Ben? Vinny, I, I think it is sympathetic, and I think she seems much younger than her 19 years. Will it, do, you, do you think it's enough that a jury would understand why someone in a hospital delivering a baby doesn't call out for help? And then somehow, I don't know what happened to the umbilical cord. I have no idea how that went down. Uh, but then puts the baby in the trash? Is, is, you think sympathetic enough that they can overlook that part and, and give her a pass on the death of the child? Well, these, uh, as you pointed out, Vinny, these are unconscionable facts, but uh, to her honor's point, she only needs to convince one juror. Uh, one sympathetic juror is really all she needs. So I, I think a lot will depend on how the evidence comes in. Professor, what are your thoughts here? So my thoughts are the video is terribly important because it preserves her youth, right? By the time she gets to trial, she's going to be older. She's going to be a mature woman. Who knows how long it's going to take to get in front of a, a judge and jury. And so that, that does preserve that argument. I think it comes down to which do you believe, that she was a scared little girl and, and acted, who knows how we would act, or was it a cover-up, right? That's 90% of our, our solutions are. Look at the cover-up, look at Al Capone, it was the taxes. We find some other way to prove that somebody had was guilty, right? Evidence of guilt, running away from the scene of the crime, the cover-up. That's the whole case. And I agree with the judge. You know, if the jury is split, she wins. If the jury is split 11 to 1, she wins. You got to convince all 12 that she was hiding something because she knew what she did was wrong. Ben, what are your thoughts about the, the hospital here? that there was negligence on the part of the hospital, but it, it, and, and that may be enough to get her that one juror she needs. Yeah, and, and Judge, th when I spoke with her attorney, he was very specific. He said about 45 minutes before she makes that run to the bathroom where she makes a delivery, the pregnancy results were on the computer at the nurse's station. And 
it wasn't clear whether or not it had been read or they knew or didn't know, but they, you know, they did a pregnancy test on her. So the results are there 45 minutes before she runs to the bathroom to give birth. Um, what, what does that mean? Does that, is this going to be enough to kind of shift the, the burden of who's in charge of this situation? Is it the mother carrying the child? Is it the hospital caring for this young woman who's carrying a child? You, I genuinely think that from a defense perspective, it's absolutely going to be the responsibility of the hospital. And that is no doubt going to be the consistent refrain throughout the trial that the hospital was aware. They failed to make their patient aware. So there's that duty of responsibility to your patient um, that the hospital is going to have allegedly lapsed on. And as a result, they, it set in motion a series of events leading to the decision making of an immature 19 year old in a traumatic and heightened emotional state to make a snap decision, which you know, some adults far more mature than that would have struggled to make perhaps an, an appropriate decision. Now, that's not to suggest that, you know, that is a winning argument for all 12 jurors. But what I will say is that I can absolutely imagine and see the defense making a really firm argument uh, to shift this responsibility squarely into the lap of the hospital. At the same time, you're going to have a prosecution that says, um, just as the professor said here, that the video evidence is really telltale evidence. It shows um, a an individual in what seems like an emergency situation actually grabbing a part of their body seemingly to prevent um, some activity and that as a result of whatever happened behind those doors or that door in that bathroom, um, what was the result of that was a deceased full term baby that um, made that person responsible for that. And they're going to argue that she knew what she was doing and she acted accordingly. And therefore that marriage of that criminal act and criminal mind is made and that we need not establish motive. We don't even have to We'd love to know the why, and we may never know the why, but it's enough that the elements are proven. That's yeah. what I think. Well, I think they could out. argue the why is right in the hospital room. Her mother's right there. She doesn't want to admit to her mother that she was sleeping with her boyfriend. I, I think that's where they're going to go. We shall see. We're just at the beginning of all this.